example is magnesium oxide. Let's start with magnesium. What is the atomic number of magnesium? 12. Electronic configuration 2H2. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? Two. So for magnesium atom to gain stability, it needs to lose its two valence electrons. And that is what magnesium does. So the atom loses two valence electrons to form an electron configuration of 2H. So 2H is the electronic configuration of the magnesium ion. So the magnesium ion that is going to be formed will have 10 electrons. The magnesium atom has how many electrons? 12 electrons. But the magnesium ion has 10 electrons and the reason for the reduction is because two electrons were lost. Now let's look at the magnesium ion. It has 10 electrons, right? The number of protons, of course, just as stated before, is going to be the same, which is 12. So we are going to have plus 12 minus 10. What is the overall charge of the magnesium ion? Plus 2. And that is the reason why when you write magnesium ion, you write it as such, Mg2+. plus. So whenever you see the 2+, plus, know automatically that this is an ion that has lost 2 electrons. Now moving on to the oxygen atom. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8. Electron configuration of 2, 6. Now you will find that if you have an atom that has 4 or more electrons in its outermost energy level, what happens is that it never loses those electrons. It simply gains more to have an octet energy level. So in the case of oxygen, what will happen is that oxygen will gain 2 electrons in order to form a full energy level, an octet energy level of 2,8. Now, where is it gaining the two electrons from? From magnesium, duh. Anyways, oxygen atom gains two electrons to form an ion. Now, let's look at the number of electrons. The number of electrons rises from 8 to 10 because we gained two additional electrons. The number of protons is still at 8. So, 8 protons, 10 electrons plus 8, ne negative 10 gives you a total charge of negative 2. So, over here, we have the magnesium ion with a charge of plus 2. The oxygen ion with a charge of negative 2. Opposites attract, voila, we have an ionic bond. So, you're going to have an ionic bond present between the two oppositely charged particles. Moving on to the next example, calcium chloride. Now, calcium has uh, an atomic number of 20. So, 20 protons equals 20 electrons. Electron configuration, let us start. 2 in the first one, 8 in the second one, 8 in the second one. How many are we remaining with? 2. B is in a girl combination. So, we have an electronic configuration of 2, 8, 8, 2. So, calcium has two valence electrons. And of course, as with the case of most metals, it's going to lose these valence electrons when it forms an ion. So, calcium will lose the valence electrons to form the calcium ion. Now, the number of electrons present in the calcium ion is going to be 18. The number of protons is still at 20. So, we are going to have plus 20 minus 18, an overall charge of plus 2. So whenever you see an ion that has a positive charge of 2, it simply means that this is an ion that has lost 2 electrons and that is the reason why overall it's positively charged because there are more protons than electrons. Now moving on to the chlorine atom. As stated before, this has an electron configuration of 2, 8, 7. It needs to gain 1 electron in order to have an octet energy level. So that is what chlorine will have to do. But there's something that I need you to note here. Calcium needs to lose two electrons. And remember, when you're talking about losing, gaining electrons, we are simply referring to electrons being transferred from one atom to another. So in this case, you're going to have electrons being transferred from calcium and moving to chlorine atoms. But in the case of calcium, calcium needs to lose two electrons. Chlorine can only take one electron. It can only take one electron in, in order to have a full energy level. You will never have a case whereby you will get chlorine atom gaining two more, like, that doesn't happen. So in short, what needs to happen is that calcium will need to bond with two chlorine atoms so that it can transfer one of its electrons to one chlorine atom and the other to the other chlorine atom. So in this case, as you can see from the chemical formula, we are going to have one calcium ion bonded to two chlorine ions. And at the end, it's all one big happy family because they are all stable. 
Now, how do we illustrate this? As such. So, you're going to place your calcium ion at the center and never, by the way, I forgot to mention this, never forget to include brackets and a charge when you're drawing or illustrating the ionic bonds. And the reason for this is because ionic bonds are present in ions. So, calcium will have a positive charge of plus two and then chloride ions on either side with a negative charge. Now, in the case of uh, either a negative charge of one or a positive charge of one, we don't use numbers. We simply use a plus or negative sign. So the plus or negative sign shows you that it's plus one or negative one. But if it's more than one, if it's two, three and such, then yes, we use the numbers plus the sign. Now, moving on to our next example, lithium fluorine. So lithium is a metal, fluorine is a non-metal. So let's start with lithium. What is the atomic number of lithium? Three. So we have an electronic configuration of two, one. So again, lithium belonging to the same group as potassium and sodium, we need to lose its single valence electron. So this forms an ion with an electron configuration of two. Now, in case you're wondering, is this going to be stable? Yes. As long as the energy level is full, then it's going to be stable. Now, for the first energy level, it can take a maximum of two. So, if you have an ion that has two electrons, then it's stable. So, that is the ion that is formed by lithium. Quick question. The ion of lithium has an electron configuration of two, which is similar to the atom of fill in the dash. Now, moving on to fluorine. Now, fluorine belongs to the same group as chlorine. So, it has nine electrons. This forms an electronic configuration of two, seven. It needs to have one valence electron in order to become stable. Lithium loses one, which is then transferred to fluorine, and fluorine gains it to form an energy level of two, eight. And it's going to have a charge of negative one. Why? Because the number of protons is going to be nine, but the number of electrons increases by one, to 10. So the fluoride ion has a negative charge, the lithium ion has a positive charge, boom, we have our ionic bond. Our last example, potassium oxide. Now potassium is our metal in this case and oxygen of course is the null metal. So the electron configuration of potassium is 2881 and the reason for this is because it has 19 electrons. Now in case you're seeing the one, the one valence electron, then yes, potassium, lithium, and sodium all belong to the same group, and that is group one. All members of group one will have one valence electron. Just in the case of halogens, halogens are elements that belong to group seven. So all of the members will have seven valence electrons. Do you know two members of the halogen group? Yes, you should. Chlorine and fluorine. Now coming back to potassium. Members of group 1 lose one electron in order to form an ion. So this goes for potassium too. So potassium will lose its valence electron in order to form a potassium ion that has an electron configuration of 288. Now, the valence electron that is lost by potassium is transferred to oxygen. But, but guys, there's something here. One potassium atom loses one electron. But when you look at oxygen, remember oxygen has an electron configuration of 2, 6. So for oxygen to become stable and have an electron configuration of 2, 8, it will need to gain 2 electrons. But potassium can only lose 1. So that means if we want this to be one happy big family, we need to have 2 potassium atoms. So that each loses 1 electron and they are both gained by oxygen. And that is the reason for the chemical formula, by the way. The chemical formula is K2O. That simply means that in this arrangement, you're going to have two potassium ions bonded to a single oxygen ion. And the reason why the potassium ions have to be two is because they will each lose a single valence electrons, which will be gained by oxygen. So oxygen will gain the two valence electrons in order to form an ion that has an electron configuration of two, eight and it is stable. So how do we illustrate this? You're going to have your oxygen ion at the center. So the oxygen ion is going to be at the center. You're going to enclose it in brackets with the respective charge that is two negative. Potassium ions are going to be on either side. So the two potassium ions are going to be attracted towards the oxygen ion. And that is the end of our part one. I hope you've understood everything, but before I sign off, I want to recommend this. 
Go through the examples that we've done and try to draw them by yourself. Now, one other thing, this is part one of our video. In the next part, I'm going to discuss the properties of ionic compounds, which is very, very important. So be sure to check it out. See you there.